Hey guys, it's Chris here from Chris's Creative Life and I design workshops that help you create beautiful layouts from start to finish with easy to follow guides. Okay, so you guys asked for it. So it's super weird. Just all of a sudden in the last like week and a half, I've been getting several messages about um, the perpetual calendar series. So I thought I should maybe come and do some more perpetual calendar pieces. So um, whoever hasn't seen the past series, they all are sitting on my YouTube channel um, in a playlist that I'll actually link this video to again after I finished November. So there are some missing ones that, so I've created them, but they were a gift. So I've given them away. So I'm thinking I might have to go back and um, recreate some of the missing months because there's no video for June, July, August, September, or October. So we'll see what happens in the next little bit. If I can um, make it happen, I will do that. I might, um, some of them might end up being not as alive, but just as um, like a recorded YouTube, but they'll end up in that playlist. So uh, just give me one second. I'm just gonna share this over to my classroom and then we can get started. Okay, so I'll show you some of the past ones um, that I have done here. So I did a shaker one in January. Just let me move this down so I can actually see what's going on here. I did a shaker one in January. Also, you probably don't need to see me anymore. So this was cute. So I have predominantly used the um, series of stamps from Close My Heart that's called Months of the Year, and there's a stamp set for each month. So I have... This on the web. Sorry, Suri is going to talk to me. We're just going to take that off. Um, so they started last year in January, so that's when I kind of started this series. So I'll just show you some of the ones, but like I said, there are YouTube videos for all of these. So this is the January one. And then this is super cute. This is February with the little cupcake and the hearts. And then February, then a March. This was like a spring one. And I've tried to, with each of them, kind of do some sort of technique with each of them. So March, April, this was super fun. This is vellum. And uh, that turned out super neat. And then May. Hey, Missy Susan. And this was, uh, this is one of my favorite stamp sets. This was, I think, the Mother's Day flowers, if I'm not mistaken. But I did use the month from the months of the year. So then these are some that I did last year. So I did do a November one last year. And a December one last year. These ones I taught inside the membership group. Um, so let's get started. We are going to create some, I want uh, someone, a insert for November. Okay, so for whoever has not seen the snap set, we're just gonna start with that. I'm just gonna move this down out of the way because we don't need it right now. Okay. So this is the November months of the year. So it's D2006, months of the year, November. So this is where I started with trying to figure out what I was gonna do. So we're gonna use this big November, we're gonna use the leaves and the acorn, but this is where this idea started. So this stamp um, says right here, sweater, sweater weather. So that made me just start to think about sweaters and fall. And so I don't know if you've seen the new stencils for this year, but we have stencils in the annual idea book that are 
um, card front size. So there's the big standard 12 by 12s and then there's some that are smaller. So I will show you in the annual. I think I even marked it. Look at me go. Okay, so these are kind of fun. So these are the standard 12 by 12s big and then these ones fit onto a card front. Not to say you can't use them on a scrapbooking page because you totally can. But so this is the one I'm gonna play with today and it is um, card front stencil pack three because this is what we're gonna do. So we're going to make this plaid because I thought it kind of looked like, it made me think of sweaters. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna create some of the leaves. And, hey Leona. And then we're gonna put it all together. We're gonna to add the month on there. So I've got a whole pile of stuff going on here. So I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create <coughs> our plaid piece. So I have grabbed some Distress Oxide inks, okay, and I have, so I have Vintage Photo, which is new um, in this idea book, and I love this one. Um, Spice Marmalade, I have Mustard Seed, and then I do have Mowed Lawn, and you'll see where that's going to come in, because I kind of felt like this was a really good representation of like the colors that you would see in fall, because they go from these to these, right? So... Sorry, I have my all-purpose mat out. Maybe I'm just going to zoom you back out just a little bit so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I've got my all-purpose mat. We're going to create our plaid first. So I'm just putting it down so I don't end up with distress oxide all over the place. Okay, so this is... The plaid is buildable and it's fun. You can create all sorts of different looks with this stencil. So here is my base for my perpetual calendar. We're gonna do some stamping on this in a second. And then I have some watercolor paper pieces we're gonna use. Not for this though, we just need white daisy for this. So here are the pieces that I have. So we're going to play with, I thought that the craft cardstock was kind of perfect for fall. So this is what we're going to do here. We're going to add the craft and this is four by four and three quarters. And then this is my piece of white daisy and this one's three and three quarters by four and a half. This is what we're going to make our sweater plaid on. And then I took the curved rectangular frame, I think that's right, this one, and I ran it through and I have this piece right here, and this is what we're gonna add November on, on the front here. So this is fun, great for shakers. So this is one of the new card front thin cuts in the new annual idea book, and it's Z4296. And you could see I was trying, I was playing around trying to decide if I would go with craft or white. But we're gonna go with white. Okay, but first off, let's make our plot. So this is just white daisy cardstock. And these are the two pieces I have out to create my plot here. There's one more stencil in the package. So all three of them come together. And the last one is this stripe. So I, you, I know it's super hard to see the stencils in the camera, but it is just three little thin stripes together. I think this one would be awesome for Christmas too. Okay, but we're gonna just use these two. So I have this piece that creates these squares and then the crisscross lines, okay? So, and I'm going to use Distress Oxides. So, like I said, this is just a piece of white daisy. And here we go. 
I'm going to tape this down to my surface. Now, I'm gonna add just a little tiny piece of um, adhesive to the back of my white panel because I'm gonna switch out my stencil and try not to move my um, white panel. Okay, so I'm gonna just tap this down so it won't move while I'm working. And I'm just trying to line it up so it's kind of straight. Okay, I'm gonna glue that down first and then lay this down how I want it on here. Okay. So I'm just kind of making sure I don't, I'm like not right on the edge. I know it's super hard to see because it's like clear and white, but okay. So there we go. I'm just gonna move those out of the way. So I'm gonna start with the spiced marmalade. Okay, so here we go. And I just have my mini blending tool for this. Okay, and it's not a very big spot, like spot that we're inking. So you don't really have to worry too much about how you are um, putting your distress oxides on here. So I'm just trying to make sure that I'm getting some through the whole stencil. So these little thin lines here, it is a little bit harder to get ink to go through there. So before I take this completely off and switch to the other stencil, I'm gonna just check and make sure that all of those lines have some distress oxides in them, ink in those spots, right? So here we go, I'm just gonna lift it up and because this is stuck down with a little bit of adhesive, right? I can, I know that I'm okay. So I just wanna add a little bit more here and across the top. Okay, so there we go. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna lift this one off, put my blending tool aside, and this is still stuck down. So I'm just gonna move this over here out of my way. And then I am going to, so now I have this little crisscross one, and these are really quite dainty, but I want them to be in the middle of the white areas that kind of are in between the other decorations. So I'm just lining it up. And then I just, I just have a little piece of washi tape on here. Okay, so these lines are quite dainty, like I said. So I am going to just use a sponge on them. So I'm gonna use Vintage Photo, okay, and I'm just gonna load it up. So I just have a dauber, and I'm just rubbing the color in those crosses, or X's, I guess, depending on which direction you were to put them down. So like I said, this one, there's not a lot of space, so I'm kind of just tapping the color in So I did go and check before this to see if all of the months were still there, and they are. So maybe we will go back and fill in some of the months that are missing in case you guys wanted to do these as like a gift for the holidays, right? So I really um, liked playing around with them because they're a nice small space where you can easily play with a technique that you might want to try out. 
and it's not like a big scrapbooking page, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna lift it and check and make sure. And I'm just gonna do these three at the top one more time. So because I'm pressing, I'm not actually moving my stencil, but that is a really small space to try. And that's why I found the dauber seemed to work a little bit better than the blending tool. Okay, so I think we are good. So it's like magic and now you have a little plaid sweater. So I'll just set those aside and I'll clean them up in a second. So I did glue this down, right? But I'm just being gentle because don't forget the distress oxides, they're not dry yet. So that's what I wanted to do this first. So here we go. This one's a little bit brighter than the other one. So I must have just managed to get a nice amount of that spiced marmalade in there. So, so there we go. I think this would look great too with Christmas colors. That would be super fun. So, but like I said, these, I wanted to just kind of go with the fall colors. So there we go. That part is done. We're just going to put it up here to dry. Okay, so now I also have these other colors and you're probably like, well, what the heck is she gonna do with those? Well, we're gonna have some fun here. Okay, so when I was playing around, this is what I decided I wanted to use to surround my November. So we're gonna play with some Distress Oxides. I might use more of this, but I needed this to dry so that I could actually use these today or we wouldn't have any. So this is what we're gonna do. So I have watercolor paper here because I'm gonna put a lot of water on my background and I wanna be able to make it look like fall leaves, right? So that's why I have the mowed lawn, the mustard seed, the vintage photo and the spice marmalade. So I'm just gonna add these in to some, on some pieces of watercolor paper. And then I have also splattered them with the Distress Oxides. And then there's also gold shimmer brush on here too. So we're gonna get messy here for one second. So I actually think I'm gonna move these pieces just to the side over here. Okay, so here we go. Our all-purpose mat comes in handy once again. Okay, and I just, I'm gonna create some more pieces. I'm not gonna use these because they're not gonna dry beforehand, but we're gonna create a piece or two. So this is our watercolor paper and it's got two sides on it. One has the rougher side and one is the smoother side. We're gonna play on the smoother side of the, the distressed watercolor papers today because I want to be able to stamp so I want that smooth surface, but I know that there's a lot of liquid, so I don't want to do it on white daisy cardstock. Okay, and this is totally personal preference as to how you want to play with the colors. Like I said, I just kind of had all of them in here, there. This one doesn't have any of the spice marmalade on it, but other pieces obviously did, right? Because there's spice marmalade in there. So this is what we're going to create. So I am going to just put some Distress Oxide down on my all-purpose mat. And you don't really, I'm not using very much. It's a really small surface we're playing with. And I just used for these pieces, scraps that I've cut up from other things, right? Okay, so I have a little bit of each color down on my mat. You, Like I said, you don't need a ton. The stress oxides go a long way. Okay, now I'm going to spray in my distress oxides. And I don't know if you can actually see, 
but they all start to just bead up. I should probably change my all-purpose knot, but you can see it's well loved. But you can see that it's all beading up, so that's going to get us some really nice texture in there, right? So now you can do this dry on your watercolor paper, but I want lots of movement, so I'm actually going to spray my watercolor paper also. Okay, and then you can just, and I'll obviously have some distressed oxide on one of my fingers, but okay. So then, now it's pliable, right? It'll bend. So you can just dip it however you want. Just be careful that you have to remember that your colors are gonna mix, right? So, and I can play with the water that's on there. So I'm just tapping on the back in the puddle and then I can make it move with the water. Okay, so because it's pliable, I can actually add, bend it and add it back into a color in a spot that I want, right? So I could roll that and now I'm using the water to make it move on the watercolor paper. So if I want a little more in the middle, let's add, try and add some yellow in there. So I'm just gonna tap it down and now I can move it all around. So, and the fun part is, right, leaves aren't one color at this time of year. They're kind of a little bit of all the colors. Some of them are still alive, some of them are starting to change, and then some of them have completely changed. So, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more of the brown. So you can see, too, we'll do another one more piece, and then I'll start adding some more stuff on here. So I have just one more piece, and I'm just gonna add some water. And I just have water in one of our spray pens. Okay, so now let's say I don't want any green. I don't have any live leaves. I'm just going to play around with the other colors. So I can tap down into as much of the other colors as I want. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more orange on my palette here. And if you want to be really intentional also about where you're adding color, you can use your water brush. So, there we go. If I want to add more color in a certain spot, I can use the water brush and pick it up and put it down. Because I've got water on there too, it's gonna flow. So if it's not landing where you want it, then you can make it go where you want to. Okay? So then, if I want some more of the brown, I can add it over here. Okay, <coughs> so then what I did next is I actually splattered also with my Distress Oxide. So you can pick up any color. If you need more color, you can add it down. But so I'm just gonna use my watercolor brush 
and I picked up the color and now I'm just tapping the brush and now you get those spots right just like it looks when you actually have leaves I'm just gonna get a paper towel because before I dip into a lighter color I want that green off my water brush so I'm just squeezing out the distress oxide I still have on my brush so let's say I want some of this vintage photo I've just picked that up with my water brush and I'm flicking it on there so I can do the same thing with this piece I'll just quickly add some on here and then I actually did the same thing and played also on the water still so this is what I did okay so we're just gonna wipe this out of the way now because I'm gonna bring in my gold shimmer brush so I'm just gonna squeeze out my water brush until it's running dry or clean I'm just gonna wipe this off because now it's really quite diluted what I have on my mat okay so now the next thing I did was you'll see there's sections where there's tons of gold and then there's also just splatter so what I did to do, make that happen was while they were still wet and if I need my water brush I'll add more water I took my gold shimmer brush I squeezed out some shimmer and I've tapped it down on the pieces and I wanted lots of gold so like I made sure I had lots of liquid on my shimmer brush and then you'll see here there's water here so when I actually drop shimmer in there it's gonna move with the water you could pick this back up and paint big sections if you wanted it I wanted the organic um, flow of just like the drops so that's why I did it while there was still water on the watercolor paper so in, I don't know if you could see it but the second you tap it down into a wet area it flows with the water so it's dry over here so if I wanted that I need to add it like just as like painted on right and you could pick up the rest and tap it on you could add some on your plaid if you wanted but I think that is where I'm gonna stop for this okay so I'm just gonna wipe this off with a wet wipe and then you can start assembling so I'll show you so like I said this is dried overnight because I wanted it flat again and this is this the smooth side so I'll just make sure actually I actually have to add water in there so I'll set that aside to clean up Put my spray pan back Okay, so I'm going to move my Distress Oxides out of the way because we don't need those. So you could play with this, like I said, for a very long time. And you could add layers and layers and other things in there. You could use different shimmer brushes like charcoal would look awesome too for fall. coffee it kind of just depends on the look that you wanted okay so now let's keep going there we are I managed to get quite messy there even with my mouth down okay so we have this piece done and we have this piece done so now it's just really a matter of finishing it all up 
Okay, so I'm going to add this piece to the background. Like I said, it is the craft um, cardstock, which I love. I, it totally feels like fall, right? And it looks awesome with like um, white embossing on it. And okay, so there we go. We have this down. Now we're gonna add our plaid piece on here. And then I'm actually gonna stamp the border on the bottom, I think, next. Because I want it to dry. Okay, so we have those two pieces, which totally look like a fall sweater to me. Okay, so then I wanna stamp across the bottom this little string of leaves. And I'm gonna do it in intense black. And hopefully it'll dry and maybe I can add some distress oxide to it before we finish. So I just have my Versamat out and I've just flipped it. And so they seem to always put like a border in here on the stamp set. So I've been adding them to the bottom on quite a few of them. Or a little bit of shimmer trim, or you can add it up here also. There, it's just a nice length. Okay, here we go. This is gonna be interesting. I have a new intense black ink because I needed ink. And it has a bit too much ink on it. So hopefully we're not going to end up with a mess here. Okay. So I'm just lining it up. Sorry about that. I think I just put my head in there. I'm just going to hold it for a second. Okay. So I don't know if you can see, but it is very wet. So we're going to let that dry and move on to our month. So like I said, I thought, see, like, look at this little, this is super cute, right? The little January has the little trees across the bottom and then the stickles. Okay. So we're going to do a November on here. And I have it right here. And I think I'm going to add it a little bit of the way down. So this is how this is going to fit on here. And then I'm going to take the leaves and tuck them around. So all I did for that was I took the, the lined stamped images once my sheet was dry and I stamped with um, black ink onto that. But you want to make sure for sure that it's all dry or everything is just going to run. And then I fussy cut them out. I don't know. We might need more. We might not. Um, we'll just see here. Okay, so I'm thinking... I might do it part way down so that then I can create my little clusters at the top there. And I think I might actually do it with the Distress Oxide. So you can see I went crazy with the um, gold shimmer brush. So let's ink this up and it is going to go over. So I'm just going to put a little piece of scratch paper underneath. So don't forget the distress oxides, you can actually stamp with them. So I'm just going to have to be careful though, to not touch this until it's dry. So I'm going to stamp it and then
leave it for a few seconds. I could also um, zap it with my heat tool. Okay, so there we go. So it just goes over both of the edges like that. And now I think we can get this. Maybe I should actually leave it because that everything might blend in to the wood underneath. So this is kind of what I'm thinking here. I am going to pop that up on 3D foam and I'm going to grab some embellishing thread and so what I really wanted also was I wanted to paint these. I don't know that that is actually going to dry enough but we will see. So I just have some gold glitter gems and some gold embellishing thread and you guys have seen me do this lots of times but I'm just going to take a length off and cut it and then roll it up. So I'm just going to take some of the kinks out of it and just pulling it against the edge of my scissors. You can do it against your um, bone folder, anything. I'm just going to roll it up on, between my fingers. About the size I think I'm going to want it. Then I'm going to just add it here on my glue dot. And I'm just going to add another glue dot on top and then I'm just going to leave that for a few seconds until I need it because it's all ready to go. Okay. I actually think so. I'm just going to distress the edges with just so I just have some of that vintage photo still on here. Uh, I'm just I just think it'll help blend it versus it being so stark white around the edge. Okay, there we go. So now. I'm just going to do thin 3D foam tape because I don't really want tons of bulk between each of the um, calendar panels, but I just want a little bit. So I'm just using the thin 3D foam tape and I'm not going to use any probably or very little on my leaves so that I'm not adding much more bulk on top. There we go. Okay, so now I can just start playing. So like I said, I just took the lined images and stamped them on black, in black, on there. So I'm going to, first I'm going to add my embellishing thread. And then I'm going to pile stuff on top of it. So I'm going to go about here. I'm just going to trim off my extra long ends here. Okay, and then I did one little acorn and I think I'm going to just add it down here and I want it just, I think, coming off the edge there. And the fun thing about this too is that the leaves end up getting, they, they curl, right? Because they're on watercolor paper. 
So they're creating their own um, texture also, right? So I'm just picking out the leaves in different colors so that I don't end up with a whole pile of the same kind of leaf in the same color in the same section. You could obviously add as many or as little as you would like. I want you to still see that embellishing thread. So I'm kind of just placing things in and then I will glue them down. And I'm just kind of, like I said, switching the leaves in different, um, different kinds and then different directions. And this is what I'm thinking over here. You can also cut off part of the leaves if you want to make them look even a little bit more different, right? You can cut off the stems if that's not working in the right spot that you want it to. So I'm gonna start gluing some of this down. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna add a little bit of 3D foam underneath the edge of this leaf and then just tuck it in. Cause I just want it slightly on top of my frame there. And just remember that this is, um, you've got some weight. I need some 3D foam tape behind there um, to this paper. So make sure you're using a lot of adhesive on it. Okay, so I'm gonna go in the back there first. You can play with them a little bit too if you want to add more texture to them. So the last thing I'll do is I'm going to add some of the, the gold glitter gems just tucked into little spaces. And I will try to see if I can paint in this little banner on the bottom, but I feel like it's gonna end up being wet, but we will see. One more in there. And then just a little 3D foam tape on here. So after, just like the other ones, I will take some pictures and add them on here in the next couple of days. So I might even Tuck a few underneath here. So this is where I could cut some of them, right? And then just poke them under. Because when they're in a leaf pile, they're not all the same. There we go.
Okay. There we go. I'm happy with that. It totally looks like I just raked my yard outside. Okay, so let's add a couple of glitter gems. Ooh, I just need to take a sip of water. It is cute, eh? I almost feel like it needs just a little bit of embellishing thread right here. So. Like not a lot. I just kind of want something just like it just like that. So So I wanted this one smaller. So I can actually just curl it right here on my glue dot and tap it in to the glue dot and it'll stay. That's the nice part about that. And then I'm just gonna cover it up with another one and then I know it's not gonna come unraveled. So I just kind of want something right here. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to add some glitter gems in here. Just kind of adding them where I want or feel I need a little sparkle. This is a great way, like you could just sit and use up the ends of like some of your embellishment packages, right? Because it doesn't take very much to um, add a lot to a little space, right? Okay, so we'll see. I'm super nervous to try this, but we will try. I'm just seeing if I have another water brush here. Okay, I have to use that other one. Okay. So let's see if this is dry enough. So there it is. I'm like, where did my all-purpose mat go? I'm just going to tap down a little tiny bit. of the yellow and like I I don't need anything right because we're just doing those little tiny leaves so I have the mustard seed and then I think I'm just going to do a little bit of the brown okay so I just have my water brush I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my surface and I can just pick it up and I can just paint in the leaves and hopefully it's not still wet. So, and I'm just picking up a little bit of the yellow to um, make them a different color. So, 
know if you could see that, but they're not, they're not just the complete brown. So I'm just picking up a little bit of the yellow and adding it to spots and then just darkening it in areas. Just so that they're not like, so that they kind of tie in to the leaves at the top. But I don't think I want all the, uh, all the different colors. And you get that nice, like it looks, it's super easy to do, but you get super nice coverage. And really, I'm hardly, I'm hardly touching. This is the smaller water brush because this is not a very big space. There we go. So I think we are done. That's not bad. Just over 50 minutes. So, okay, so let me just wipe this off so that I don't end up getting it all over my project. And I'll just go over a few of the parts today. So I can add myself back in now. So I actually think it turned out super cute. So like I said, I went with the theme of like the uh, plaid sweater. So this stencil is fun if you haven't played with it. You'll probably see it again. Cause like I said, I totally see also Christmas sweater, you know, those ugly sweater photos that you have. That's, I could totally see playing with that for um, that kind of a layout. So this is, I know it's hard to see, but it turned out actually super pretty. So that's just the yellow and the brown. So the mustard seed and the vintage photo. And then our leaves have the mustard seed, the vintage photo, then there is Spiced marmalade, and I did use mowed lawn on mine because I kind of wanted all of those um, transitions, right? From that fresh, fresh when it just your leaves just start to turn to all the difference. And then I speckled them with some of the distress oxides, but also with the shimmer brush. Um, because if you look at leaves too, that's kind of how you see them, right? With little bits of parts that are different colors and stuff. So there we go. That's what I got for you guys today. Like I said, I'll add some still shots up. It's super interesting. I don't know why all of a sudden people started asking about it again. It was just literally within the last week and a half. And like I said, those the other months I didn't do um, live videos for, so I might go back and um, work on some of them. So for the missing months, because these would make awesome holiday gifts for sure. Um, and they're not crazy expensive, right? And then you can, everybody knows when your birthday is because you can add it right on there yourself. So I hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.